Hello everyone and welcome back to the Kohi Game Engine series. Today we are going to tackle the second part of the input system, which is hooking it up to our platform specific code. And in this video, we are going to tackle the Windows portion of that. And we're going to get started right now. Really quick though, I would like to take a quick second and thank the partners of the channel, AR Slea and Wen Shang. The partner is the highest tier of supporter on the channel. And so I just wanted to say thank you to our partners as well as our other supporters that are listed here on the screen. So if you're interested in supporting the channel, there are a couple ways to do that now. First off, I have channel memberships available. You can access that by clicking the join button below this video. I'll also provide a link to a video that I have describing the memberships. And I also have a newly launched Patreon page, which is patreon.com forward slash Travis Roman. And I've set that up because I've had a few requests for that versus the YouTube memberships. So if it's easier for you to use that instead, that is now available for you. So thank you all very much for your support. It is greatly appreciated and I will be rolling a lot of that back into this channel. Okay, so Windows thankfully is actually going to be the simpler of the two platforms to implement uh, simply because we are just going to use the same codes that Windows uses. So if you recall before in the previous video, I mentioned that the codes here were actually pulled from the codes that Windows uses itself for the key codes. And that, as it turns out, is going to be a direct mapping. So we don't have to do any translation between Windows and the codes that we have defined here. So with that in our Win32 platform, we wanna go ahead and scroll down to our process message. And if you recall here from several videos ago where we set this stuff up, we actually had a lot of comments in place here as to how this input processing was actually going to work. So we have our uh, WM key down, sys key down, key up and sys key up. These are various messages that Windows uses to detect uh, key presses. And so that is what we're gonna hook into first for our keyboard codes. Before I can do that though, I actually have to go up here to the top and include input.h. So back in process message, these guys are gonna be the ones that we're basically going to fill out. Right, so we're going to start with the keys first, and we're basically going to handle all the key down and key up events all in one shot. And we're going to detect pressed as to whether the message is WM key down or sys key down. So that uh, if, it, if it's either one of those two, so this one or this one, then we're going to go ahead and say pressed is true. And then the keys, we're actually going to extract the key code from the W param. So the W param is uh, basically this uint pointer type that Microsoft gives us, this W param. That is going to contain our U16 key code. So we'll cast that to a U16 and then uh, that will become our key code. And then next, all we have to do is pass it to our input subsystem for processing. So we just pass the key and pressed. That's it, that's all there is to it. Nice and simple, like I said. So the next one is mouse move. Now we have these lines here that we put before. So we have our X position and our Y position and we take the L param in this case, which is this guy, uh, and we extract a X and Y from that because that's the way that Microsoft actually uh, packs the X and Y mouse position into that uh, particular parameter. They pack both in there and you just have to use this macro uh, that gets a low word and the high word uh, from that same integer. So there's basically two integers packed into one. And then we just uh, save those off as I32s. And then as far as the processing goes, it's again going to be pretty straightforward stuff. We pass it over to input process mouse move. And we just pass X position and Y position. And again, that's it. Super simple stuff. Next, I'm actually gonna uncomment this block and we have our mouse wheel event, right? And so Microsoft provides us this W param extraction data to get the wheel delta from our W param. And we save that off as the Z delta. Now, depending on the mouse that you have, it can potentially provide different values for this. So 
I believe in a lot of cases it actually provides like 120 and then a negative 120. And for our intents and purposes, we actually don't want that kind of information. We want to simply know, did it move up or down? And so we are actually going to use this line here to flatten that to something that's OS independent, right? So basically we're gonna say, um, if first of all, the Z delta is not zero, then we are gonna say, okay, well, if it's less than zero, use a negative one, otherwise use a one, okay? And of course, if the Z delta is zero, we're not gonna to wanna to do anything. So this actually covers us there as well. We only wanna fire off something to the input subsystem if we actually have something to fire off, right? So we flatten that input first, and then we go ahead and say input process mouse wheel, and we pass along the Z delta, which will now either be negative one or one. Again, super simple stuff. So the only bit of code that we're actually really gonna have to put, uh, that's more than say four or five lines of code, is for the buttons. So Windows provides all these uh, left, middle, right button, down and up events. And so we've flattened all those things just like we did with keys. And so we say pressed is equal to true if the message is L button down, R button down or M button down, okay? And then after that, we want to extract which button was actually pressed, okay? And yes, technically speaking, we could do this by splitting these up into individual cases, but I think doing it this way is a little bit cleaner, even though it's a little bit repetitive somewhat. So the first thing that we do is we sort of set the mouse button to a default, and then we switch based on the message, right? And so we say, if it's either left down or left up, then the button is left. If it's either middle button down or middle button up, then it's the middle button and the same goes true for the right button, okay? So we have our pressed state here, our button is set here, which is this technically covers all of these cases here. So we'll never have to worry about not hitting one of these. And then after that, we essentially just pass it through to the input system. So we do a final check here to make sure that it's not set to this button max buttons, which is what we defaulted it to up here. This should never happen, but as a programmer, you should always program for things that you think should never happen, but potentially for some weird foobar reason do or could happen. So we're gonna go ahead and guard against that and basically say, uh, if for some reason that it is that, we're not going to do anything with it, we're just gonna throw it away. And then uh, of course we call input process button, passing through the mouse button and whether or not it was pressed. With all of that, let's go ahead and build. Okay. And I'm actually gonna go up here to our input. And in the mouse move, we actually had a debug function. I'm actually gonna uncomment this for a second, just so that we know that that's being called so we know it's hooked up. I'm gonna go ahead and build this again and run. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and copy this over. And as you can see, just me moving this over here, it's already, it's actually working. So up here we have zero, zero, if I can actually hit it directly, right? So our first pixel there is zero, zero. And then if we go all the way down here, we have our 720, it's gonna be 719 and seven and 1279. There we go. So that's the last pixel there. So we know our input is working correctly. Uh, the other thing that you will notice here is since we have done some checks to make sure that uh, at least one of the values has indeed changed before actually kicking this off, uh, you'll notice that we don't actually have any duplicates here. At least one of these has changed from the last time that we've actually output this. So um, we know that that code is actually working as well, okay? Now, one last thing that I would like to hook up is I'd like a quick way for us to be able to close out of the application and basically be able to do that by a key press, right? So what I'm looking for is to be able to basically quit the application uh, whenever we hit the escape key. And that's just gonna allow us for quick debugging, right? So this is uh, also gonna give us a chance to sort of exercise our event system a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to create a couple of event handlers and I'm gonna go to application at the top here and I'm gonna forward declare some functions, okay? 
And we have one that's just an, a generic on event, and then we have one that is on key. And so the important thing that I want to point out here is we can have more than one event handler that could be registered for, right? And so in this case, this will handle a lot of different types of events, whereas this one will handle specifically keys. And we'll see that in a second as to why we're setting it up that way. So I'm going to go here to the bottom of our application because we don't need to have this towards the top where everything else is. And I'm going to define our application on event first. And this one's only going to handle one particular code, but this is should give you an idea of how this actual uh, event system is going to be used throughout the system. So we take our code and we want to check to see what code was actually passed. Well, if that code was application quit, then we're going to go ahead and log something out saying, hey, uh, we've received a quit message. We're going to go ahead and shut down. And then we're going to flip the application state is running to false. And we're going to return true that this event has been handled. And that is basically going to block this application quit from going anywhere else. Okay. If for some reason we receive a code to this that is not this, then we're going to return false saying we didn't handle it. This is going to be a very common setup that we're going to use throughout the system. And uh, it's something that you'll see repeated quite often. So this is how we're going to handle our application quit code from anywhere in the system. So there probably will be several places in the system that could actually fire off this event and uh, the application will be listening for it. So the next one that I want to set up is the on key. And this one has a little bit more code in it. In fact, uh, let me get rid of this real quick so we can see. So first we check to see if it is a key press, right? And we could do it this way. I'm just sort of doing it this way to illustrate the different ways that we could, we could set this up, right? You could use a switch or you could use ifs as I have here. Realistically, these should probably be reversed, but whatever, it's fine. So first we check to see if we have a key press. Uh, then we extract the key code from the first U16. So if you recall in our input system, our input process key, when we fire off the event, in our event context, we are actually setting the first U16 to our key code. So this is basically just the other side of that extracting it back out, okay? And so it's very important to keep this in mind that your handler should know how to read from the context what it needs. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna check to see if the key code equals key escape. So this is where we're actually gonna say, hey, did we actually hit the escape key? The next thing that we're gonna do here is we're gonna fire another event. Now this is not something that you should do very often, but in this case it's okay because we're actually killing the engine. So in this case, we are going to fire a event code application quit, which is listened for up here or handled here, I should say. We haven't set up the listener yet. So we're gonna go ahead and fire this event, which will in turn kill the engine. So whenever we hit escape, it's going to come in here, say, hey, we've hit escape and then fire off this message. And then we're gonna say, hey, this has been handled by returning true and I'll block anything else from handling it. The other thing, I've got a couple of other explicit key tests in here. So uh, just to make sure that our, our system is working as designed. So we're gonna also check to see if the A key was pressed. And if the A key was pressed, we're gonna go ahead and spit out uh, an explicit, hey, the A key was pressed. Otherwise, we are going to attempt to output that key code uh, as a character to a debug message. Now, some keys, this will actually show a weird character because it doesn't actually map to an ASCII character, but that's fine. For these tests, it's fine. That's all this is, is test code anyway. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're also gonna check for a release, right? And again, we're gonna extract the key code the same way. And we're gonna say, hey, if the B key is explicitly released, then we're going to say, okay, well, the B key was released here as a debug message. So we're explicitly checking A, and then checking everything else here for a press. We're explicitly checking B here for a release and, and then checking everything else for a release here. And then finally, if we don't meet this criteria here, then basically we're gonna say return false, which means that we haven't handled it and other things can also receive that event to then handle it. So that is our handlers. So we have our on event, our on key. Now we actually need to listen for them. So up here in our application initialize, application create rather. Underneath our event initialize, because we obviously don't want to listen for events before we've initialized the event system, right in here between event initialize and platform startup, we're gonna go ahead and listen for some events, okay? So the three events that we wanna listen for 
our application quit and we're going to pass as our function pointer application on event, right? And then for key pressed and key released, we're going to assign both of those to application on key. Now we have our event registers here. And if you recall, we actually have our event unregister that we need to do as well. So down here in run, before we shut down the event system, we should also go ahead and unregister from those events. Okay, just to make sure everything's cleaned up as it should be. Technically speaking, this probably isn't needed because we're killing the application here, but um, just to be explicit and show you how this works, this is how you unregister from an event. So the, the call is basically the same. You pass the same stuff to it. The signature, I should say, is the same. Uh, you just call unregister instead of register. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and build this and run. And you know what, we're actually, we're still getting uh, these mouse positions, so I'll probably wind up turning that off. But if I press A, you'll see here that we get explicit A key pressed, but then A key was released in the window. And if I press B, you'll see that the B key was pressed in the window and then the explicit B key released message was actually logged. So we know our input is actually working. If I press space, uh, gives us a space key was pressed in the window. If I press W, we have W and so forth. The other advantage to doing it this way is when we actually query for our key presses, which we'll show probably somewhat later in the series, um, we can actually use the sort of quoted um, text here, the single quote character to actually query for that too. So we don't necessarily have to use the you know key underscore S, for example, if we don't want to. But uh, that's a note for, for much later in the series. So the real question is, is when we press escape, what happens? There we go, it worked. So to prove that this works, first off, I actually want to go back to input and I'm gonna turn back off this debugger because it's very noisy. And I'm actually going to go to entry.h and I'm gonna put a, a breakpoint right here at the end so that um, we actually stop when the application quits, but can see our log still before it actually closes out. So we'll run again, bring these back over here. Okay. And put this out front. Okay. And so I'll make sure that this all works. You know, our keys work, A, B, all that stuff works. Okay. And when I press escape, we'll see here, our info, event code application quit received shutting down. And so we know that the event was received and the engine is actually shutting down. So we know that our event system is now working. Therefore, we no longer have to worry about closing the window the old fashioned way. We can just hit escape and quickly close out of the application. So that is pretty much gonna do it for this video. That is the Windows hookup and the event registration and unregistration and uh, some hookups to that. So I'm actually gonna end this video here. And the next video will be hooking up the Linux side of this, which is a little bit more effort, but thankfully, since we have the groundwork laid for everything else, it'll actually be pretty straightforward and, um, and quick as well. Anyways, if you guys liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, consider subscribing. Click the little bell notification icon there to get notified when the next video in this series or other series drops. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.